Okay, here's something else. I um, I want to break down <laughs> for a second. Sorry, I guess I'm like having all these thoughts as I'm walking and I was going to write them down, but I felt I really like this outfit, so I'm trying to give you... <laughs> I'm trying to give the fashion girls here thoughts and outfits. We can, we can call this a series thoughts and outfits, right? But, um, okay. So I feel like right now with things like Instagram and YouTube, TikTok and other streaming services, like we are actually able to see talent no matter where it currently lives, right? Like, so you could start a YouTube channel right now in Addis Ethiopia and you can just put it online and there's probably like someone who will come across it who's not a part of that community and if they find value and they share your content in other communities you could develop an international audience and like this is the whole idea around like marketing or whatever like but you could like basically market yourself which is incredible it's great but here's the thing where this kind of breaks down some age-old ideas around like nepotism because like Let's unpack this for a second because this is something that I've dealt with a lot. What if you were like a beautiful person who was like completely into fashion and you just had all of the things, but for some reason, like the fashion scouts basically said, we are not going to work with you. We don't choose you. And it's not because you're mean or because you've done anything wrong. It's just because they don't like your particular, your race. So, so in all the other aspects, like people walking through the world, they're like, oh, you're so great. You're like this fashion icon. And you're like, yeah, but I actually can't work in the industry because like the white people who run the entire industry, they've said no, they only like Karen. So unfortunately I can't do that. You guys have no idea how many black girls that has been the story for. I mean, people who have all of the things and they still just cannot get <laughs> they can't get ahead and i feel like this is another reason why some people need to take platforms like youtube a lot more seriously because despite how few subscribers you have now or how little promotion or support you might be getting right now for your content you do have a space to store your content, which is really important. And you have a way to distribute your content really to anyone. And it's really up to you to take your content creation seriously and your content distribution seriously. Those are things that you can do. And I think that like, for some reason, um, people aren't doing that. People don't feel like it is necessary or it's like a good idea to, um, how do you say, like promote themselves. And you really should, like you should absolutely promote yourself and tell like your story. Because like your story is, your story is a part of the greater narrative, right? Like. For, let me give you an example. So a lot of people are familiar with the story of Ruby Bridges. So Ruby Bridges is this black child who integrated a white school. Now, um, there are so many pictures that are on the internet and books written about what that experience was like for her because people have promoted and propagated her story and she's like the protagonist of this story and they've propagated it far and wide. But in reality, she's not the only person and she's not the first person to integrate a school. Like her particular story happened in America and her particular story, she's like a black female child. But what about when the Desi girls integrated the you know lighter skinned uh, community in Pakistan? That's the same story of integration. <laughs> like Ruby Bridges could be a hero in the, that community if those Desi girls knew that story, but they, a lot of them don't. But Ruby Bridges, her story is about integration at its core and the, um, the backlash and the way that other people interacted to her experience. Like in the story, you see white mothers holding signs that say, no niggers here. And they're walking back and forth with their children and they give their, their little white children signs too. And they watch, they march back and forth and they say, no niggers here, no niggers here. And they, it's all, it's all over the news, right? And that's how those people feel. 
and that's how they felt then and they probably still feel that way now like these people have gone on to have their own children and their, their ideology hasn't changed right like we heard it on the nicole hannah jones podcast we read it in the newspaper articles like nothing has changed these are the exact same people they told us how they feel like i don't understand why people are confused and they feel like they don't get it you can play a million rap songs they can sing two pop songs all day and attend the concerts that has nothing to do with the fact that they do not want their schools integrated like look at the stats okay go look at where people are going to school and where they're not what happened in the ruby bridges story the Karen said, we do not want school integration. What is happening? We do not have school integration. That's it. That, there's not, there's that, that's the story. <laughs> like, we can have all this shit about how Ruby Bridges felt and pictures of her being sad and the signs of the white mothers and whatever violence is. Like, you, can do, you can explain away violence for yourself. Like, this is violence. This is not violence like whatever it is right like I would I personally would classify that the actions by those mothers as violence especially like violence toward a child and really like uh, how do we say like supported legalized um active really like white national terrorism I and mean, that's that's really what the actions were and are but in terms of like a legal law, like, okay, so it's not that the law hasn't said it was that, but if you actually look at the actions and what was done and what was said and how people felt and like what the legal ramifications of that was, um, there were winners. <laughs> the people who literally got the government to sponsor charter schools that still remain all white. I think those Karens won. So yeah, okay, maybe Ruby Bridges got to go to a school, but it was like a low income neighborhood school and those still exist. And the children who are coming out of those schools are still not doing well. <laughs> those neighborhood schools are still producing black kids who can't read today. Today, like today, the kids who are coming out of those schools, now they're, they're coming from Yemen, they're coming from Mexico because all these like kids of color, everybody's integrating, right? And they're like, we're getting a public education. We can participate in Americana. And then now they're graduating and they're going on to college and they're realizing they're, ha they're having to compete in the global, with this globalized market of people who started life with way more than them and they can't compete. And that's the reality. It's, it's, a, it's a race, but it's kind of like a race to go nowhere because it's kind of like you get what you get and don't throw a fit sort of thing i know i don't know if some of you guys have parents who said that but it's a very common parental sort of phrase you get what you get and you don't throw a fit uh it's kind of like that at birth the privilege of birth is real like being born to a poor mother is um sometimes that's a curse you can't come back from because you might have to deal with domestic ab abuse you might have to deal with um, food insecurity, you might have to deal with housing insecurity, you might have to deal with neighborhood violence, okay, you, you might have to, do, to deal with illiteracy, like who's, who's going to read to you at home at night when your parents are at work, if there's nobody there, or if your parents can't read, like, that's another thing I think people, like, sometimes they forget, like, there are adults right now living in society who one, do not know how to use computers and do not have an email address. Two, do not know how to read at all. Or three, do know how to read, but they're reading at a seventh grade reading level because most adults in society right now are reading at a seventh grade reading level. That is the average in terms of like the adults in America. Like that's what my study of literacy taught me as an individual. Like people, Americans are actually really, really stupid. <laughs> Like they are not reading on par with like everybody else around the world, okay? So if you are reading at a seventh grade reading level and you get a document that's talking about how you could potentially support your kinder, right? And the, 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 the flyer is uh, written for a 12th grade reading level as it should, right? But so you can actually understand some of the words that are being used you don't know when it's saying, take this action, do this, email this person, 
that sh it doesn't mean anything to you because like the words don't make sense so this is why like um some people especially like i think some black parents at this point are kind of like looking around and they're seeing specifically they're seeing like continental africans <laughs> or people who the people who like know they're black like a good example of this is so abba and preach put out a video yesterday where preach was like he was just laughing but he was also very like upset because a woman asked him like do you identify as black i've said this multiple times like i am the child like you can might you might think oh she's brazilian oh she's this oh she i have never been confused about racially where i stand and there are actually there are other black people who have had that experience but i don't know what it is i can just explain it from my own personal experience like biracial children who are born with white parents they do not understand like the meaning of black isn't the same like they are not living a black experience because like so much of their lived experience is based in racism like you, there's so many people who have written about this and who've made content about this but it's like kind of like dissecting the way that like white mothers are parenting biracial children it's really toxic because like first of all dealing with racism in america is already hard but imagine like looking up to someone who's trying to like teach you something and they don't know it's like how can you teach someone to read if you don't know how to read like you can kind of show them the book you could give them the book but that's not like <laughs> the reading comprehension ph phonics part phenomes it's not adding up you know what i'm saying because it's like they are just it's just like a hope for you it's, it's almost like um here's another thing i can give another example here so like my mom in her life like she will always talk about like i know this person who's done who's done that i know this person who's done that and a lot of people do that they are like the the mr me too's right they'll always talk about what somebody else is doing oh this person did that oh that person did this oh he said this oh she said that okay but what about you I want to hear about you well I really don't give a shit about you that's why this channel is all about me but like the all I ever talk about is shit that's happening to me <laughs> my own lived experiences like I'm living for me you should go live for you I feel like I really appreciate the Meg Thee Stallion video because she's basically talking about like y'all when you see me be mad like stay mad because like every, there's so many women who are out here criticizing her body saying all these things about her trying to make trying to bring her down when in reality you guys know like meg the stallion is a bad bitch like she's like super gorgeous her body is the body that all the baddies want meg has it like all the things that you guys try to get plastic surgery for she has it and she was born with it and this entire time throughout the rise of her career she's just been like yeah no i already have it and y'all have been trying to copy her and some of you guys have been like hating on her i feel like for a while i just didn't I, like i don't have that i gotta put some context here like i don't have meg's body like i am not the person who's walking around being like i'm the body like no like i'm not the body so for like a lot of meg's career i couldn't actually understand where she would where she was coming from because like i don't live that experience like i live my own experience and it's not my experience is not based in me being like the body right like this like curvaceous like mwah, mwah, you know like that's not me i don't see myself that way maybe other people do i don't know i don't see myself that way meg does see herself that way me that's how me and meg are different obviously we're different in quite a lot of other ways but i feel like so much of it is like y'all refuse to see black women as individuals like when Meg Thee Stallion writes a song, she is not representative of all or most black women or just women in general. Specifically, first of all, Meg is like rich, okay? <laughs> she's like an international rap superstar and she's like really pretty in the face. Like Meg is extremely pretty and her body is proportionally perfect. That literally makes her like 10 times better than like all the other women that you see in society every day like she wins all the, th the all the things that kim kardashian paid for meg was born with them like she's better she's better she's that girl everybody should give her her flowers okay like yes but like for most of us out here 
that is not our experience okay and like i feel like to be on well i don't know about everybody else because i don't hear the way some of y'all be talking but like i i swear i hear ugly girls all the time promoting themselves as pretty and i'm just so confused like i don't i'm not the person who's gonna go out and ruin little girls dreams and shit and be like sorry bitch you're ugly like i'm not gonna do it to your face but i might write a blog post because i have my own feelings right like I, remember, I was in San Francisco like a few weeks ago and then uh, there was a there was a woman there with her husband now both of these like are obese Frexicans okay and I'm like sitting there trying to order my uh, churro right I'm just I'm just waiting in line trying to get the churro now first she orders something and then she kind of like walks away five minutes later he orders something too now he keeps changing the order now like 10 minutes have gone by and I am frustrated I'm so frustrated. So I'm like, bro, please hurry up and just order the churro. And he's like, look, just wait your turn. And I'm like, bro, maybe you should fucking like chill out on the churros anyway. You and your fat ass wife have had enough. Now I said that out of frustration. I'd had enough, I was frustrated. I'm waiting there for 10 fucking minutes. And he, what is he gonna order the whole cart? He's already fat enough, he's an obese motherfucker. Like maybe you should not actually have the churro. You've had enough. Sometimes it's actually time to dial it back and be like, oh, I don't need it. I'm just saying 10 fucking minutes later, I'm still sitting here in line and I had no fucking churro because he keeps changing his mind. Oh, I want this, I want this, no, I don't want this, you take this off. There's only four fucking items on the menu, bro. Just fucking pick one, you know? It's like, I was so frustrated. I was so frustrated. And I think this is what I mean. Like some things, like you really just had to be there. Like you just had to be there to experience it for yourself, okay? Like, okay, so here's another thing I appreciate, which which I kind of think it just brings some shit to reality. Like, okay, so we, we can all say whatever we want about um, the Manosphere. I don't even know the name of the show, the two, the two black guys who are criticizing all the women. Yes, maybe what they're doing is mean. We can say that, they're mean. Oh, they're mean, blah, blah, blah some aspects of what they say are true some aspects of what they say are false just like everything else there's perspective some women should not listen to that because it's going to make them feel bad about themselves and so yes you shouldn't listen to that but also like their perspective and their opinions are true they're just not the only truth as in like there's more than one truth so i feel like what, something that's happening was very strange it's like some of you are consuming content from like one or two content creators that are virtually the same, right? You're like, so it's like the same person from like this one community and this other community that are all very similar to you. So then you're watching the content and you're thinking like, my worldview is right, my worldview is right. And little did you know, like there's hundreds of channels out there where people are explaining shit. There is another community in the world really online that does not agree with you we aren't the same like there the issue is like you have not taken the time to reach out and listen to that other community you just assumed that everything that you said was right and it wasn't like you it wasn't it was just like you you just surrounded yourself with like yes men or people who just completely agreed with you and everywhere you looked like everybody was pretending some people were pretending that they agreed with you when they didn't some people it, all this shit right and so like what i have personally done to kind of like escape that you know like the the power of a single story bullshit is i just created finstagram accounts right so what i'll do with a finstagram account i always start it the same way i would just post like a few photos of me doing regular shit out in the world okay so then then people will organically follow me like i never invite even people i know i never invite anyone to follow me like if you if you think i'm interesting and you care about what i'm doing follow the account you could also just be like i don't care about what you're doing i'm not gonna follow the account this has nothing to do with like who is pretty and who is not this is another reason i feel like some of you guys are confused because you're like all oh, the pretty people have all these followers no you can buy followers <laughs> So you could just be like, I'm gonna go buy 100,000 followers right now. And then you will now have 100,000 followers. That has nothing to do with your impact, your influence, how much people like you or how pretty you are. 
that just literally means you have this number of followers. That's all it means. That's what it means. And I'm not saying it's good. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying that's the reality. So the problem is, especially like men have been doing this, they are literally looking, scouring the internet for popular profiles. Like, oh, she's got 2 million followers. This means that she is blah, 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 blah. Or she writes in her description box, I am a model. And all of a sudden you believe it. Like I could write right now. I could be like, I'm a neuroscientist. Does that mean I'm running a department at Berkeley? No, I could also literally be a biochemist at Berkeley, but just not put it in my profile. See how both of those things can be true at the same time. And it's kind of up to you to like do your research and figure out what's real and what's not. It's up to you. You can believe, you cannot believe. The thing that I have a problem with is like, I have been around talented, marginalized people my entire life. And I've just seen sort of like the destruction and dream killing that has come when these marginalized groups do not get their credit. So like for me, I think I wanna even take more time to write about Marseille Martin and her outfit at her birthday party. First of all, because she looks incredible, but secondly, because the person who designed her is a gay male of color a black gay male, like the most marginalized group. He deserves his fucking flowers and not when he's dead, now. He deserves his flowers right now, right now. Cause he's here right now and that outfit is killing. Like she looks incredible. She can have one follower, she can have 10 followers. She looks incredible and that's the truth. And I want people to be able to appreciate the beauty and the aesthetic for what it is. She is pretty and she is black at the same fucking time. She's wearing African Bantu knots. Like stop putting non-beauty and ugliness onto black people, onto Africa. The most beautiful people on the fucking planet are black. You can agree or you can be delusional like the rest. Okay, but the truth is the truth. It is what it is. I'm tired. I'm like, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. And I like, I, it, there, there just has to be somebody who's out here trying to explain to everyone how things really work. Because there's too many people who are just out here fucking faking like all the Holly weirdos. I'm telling you, broke bitches come from all states, all parts of the globe. The Uranians, are you fucking kidding? They'll come here off a plane like tomorrow and be like, we are Hollywood elite. Like, bitch, we've been here. You look broke. You look broke. You are broke. Like, it's not, we've already, we, uh, how long have bitches had cameras here? A long time. We've seen it all. Everything. Like, nothing is surprising. It's not giving what you think it's giving. It's not. Like, the, the chips have been dealt and not in some like it's kind of funny way like people have shit and black people have a lot of shit not all not most but i'm fucking telling you right now there's a lot of fucking rich black people like rich rich all right they aren't a car trashy and rich it's not like that it's not like that you can't look at instagram and necessarily know who's who because there's also a lot of black people who like to fake like they have shit, but they don't know what real money is. They don't have no idea what wealth is, okay? This is why you can have an artist like Bia talking about she has a whole lot of money when her net worth is probably like a million dollars. Maybe it's more, but what is a million dollars to a billionaire? Nothing, that's not a lot of money. It's not. I know software engineers right now who are earning more money than her. Like it's not that incredible. If you like the song, like the song. If you like her outfit, like her outfit. If you think she's pretty, great. Whatever it is that you like about an artist, a person, an Instagram post, like that. It is something good, appreciate it. But don't do it at the expense of another group. So here's where I have the problem. When someone will be like, I like Bia because she's a Borapa, a Puerto Rican or something, and be like, oh, at least she's not black. Like, no, 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 no. Like, like she, she, she can be pretty, and also a black girl can be pretty, and a white girl can be pretty, and an Asian girl can be pretty. All there are many pretty girls, and I've been trying to say this and give you guys direct examples of hot and not from every group, every group, every group. Things are complicated and contextual, and it's just it's not my fault 
that half of you guys were not tra trained to critically think. That's not my problem. I'm not taking ownership or responsibility for the fact that you're retarded. Like maybe you should have read more books. Maybe you should have listened to more stories. Maybe you should have more friends from other racial and ethnic groups. And if you didn't do that, it's not my fucking problem. Like if you are just now entering the conversation around intersectionality, I'm sorry, but you should have gone outside more. You should have fucking listened to any person on the radio. If you don't know about how Nicki Minaj has changed the face of fucking rap, hip hop, and being a woman in the world, that's not my issue. Many people have made content about it. I, I'm not gonna remake the same video somebody else has made. They've already done it. They've already done it. You know what I mean? Like we don't, we need something new. We need something different. This is why I'm gonna keep making more content about Black Pink, right? Because I remember growing up and I remember seeing Gwen Stefani completely culturally appropriating every single thing it meant to be Korean, to be Japanese. The anime chicks, the Japanese fashion girls have been the influence of pop fashion for a good 30 years. And so to have Fergie and Gwen Stefani completely culturally appropriate without giving their respect is disrespectful. Say what you want, but it is what it is. I'm here for Blackpink being completely Asian because they are. I'm here for them creating a sound uniquely theirs because they made it the fuck up. Okay, like, started from the bottom. I'm here for Drake telling whatever story that he's telling about whatever he's saying. He can make a song about a fucking lollipop and I would listen. Why? Because it's like uniquely his story. That's just not the American experience though. Like, people here have been hand- they have like- 60 million teens, they have like uh, budgets out of this world. I, I mean, they could have $47 billion to invest in one Justin Schmieber. Fuck that motherfucker. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I've never been a Justin Bieber fan ever. I refuse to support white mediocrity. I can't do it. I'm sorry. No. Especially when you have that much fucking money behind you and everyone else is just kind of like, um, we just... We just want an opportunity, like, no, 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 no. I'm sorry, you're not getting my view, you're not getting my support, and you're not getting my like. I'm gonna keep making dislike criti critique videos every day, mashing shit up, making cartoon animes about it that goes opposite of what you believe because I just am, I just am. I don't have to like it just because you say so. And you, like the fucking others, can stay mad. Stay mad.